Of all the kids in the seventh grade at Camillo Junior High, there was one kid that Mrs. Baker hated with heat whiter than the sun. Me. And let me tell you, it wasn't for anything that I'd done. If it had been Doug Zwitek that Mrs. Baker hated, it would have made sense. Doug Zwitek once made up a list of 410 ways to get a teacher to hate you. It began with spray deodorant in all of her desk drawers, and it got worse as it went along. A whole lot worse. I think that things became illegal around number 167. You don't want to know what number 400 was, and you really don't want to know what number 410 was. But I'll tell you this much. They were the kinds of things that sent kids to juvenile detention homes in upstate New York so far away that you never saw them again. But it didn't matter. Mrs. Baker hated me. She hated me a whole lot worse than she hated Doug Zwitek. As you can tell, Mrs. Baker hates hauling Hood Hood. He has proof. He's the only kid in the seventh grade who has to read Shakespeare outside of class. While the rest of his friends go to religious classes at their churches every Wednesday afternoon, Holling and Mrs. Baker are stuck at school, and neither person is that excited about the situation. So, Mrs. Baker decides that they need to read Shakespeare together. Yep, Holling's pretty sure his, te his teacher hates him. But Mrs. Baker and her ancient literature are only a few of Holling's worries. For one thing, the class bully keeps demanding that Holling bring the whole class cream puffs. In addition to this, Mrs. Baker's pet rats have gotten out of their cage and are living in the walls. Holling's problems continue at home where his father is so wrapped up in the family business that he doesn't realize that Holling's older sister is getting ready to run away. Plus, it's 1967 and the U.S. is in the middle of a huge conflict in Vietnam. The final straw comes when Holling's baseball hero is coming to town the night that Holling has to appear in a play, wearing yellow tights. Seventh grade is really not turning out the way that he expected. It's The Wednesday Wars by Gary Schmidt. Dad, you ready for bed now? No. Tell me a story. You want to hear about the children, hmm? Okay. Once upon a time, on an island, on the other side of the world, there live some very peculiar children. They all lived together in a big old house. It was an enchanted place where no one could find them. And the sun shone every day. They were so happy. What were they like? They were not like other people. They could do amazing things. Like what? Well, let's see here. There was a little boy who you couldn't see at all unless he was wearing clothes. And another one who could hold fire in her bare hands as if it was nothing. There was a pair of sisters who could talk to each other without ever saying a word. And a girl who could walk without her feet even touching the ground. She was so light, they had to tie a string around her middle to keep her from floating away. Oh. And they were all watched over by a wise old bird. Did they have to stay there? Yes, they did. Because they were hiding. Hiding from what? Tell me the rest. One day. We were taken away, pitted against each other. Four orphans vying for a stolen crown. Judged on our bravery, our strength, our wits. And most importantly, our willingness to lie. Each of us has a choice. Between living someone else's life and losing. doesn't like a family vacation. Cool, fun, exciting. And sailing in the South Pacific? Sounds great, right? Well, for four kids, 
who have nothing much in common except that their parents fell in love, forcing them to become a new family. This sailing vacation was a chance to learn about each other in extremely close quarters. Instead, they discovered that a massive storm has left them shipwrecked with no adults, no instruction, no one on this forsaken island. Now they have to learn to work together if they want to survive. That is, if they can survive each other.